Hello, welcome to Analog Output, and this is the first of two videos about a couple of interesting modules. The first one is this one here. This is the Hero Voltage Controlled Oscillator. And this is a fairly standard voltage controlled oscillator in most respects. It's sort of based on a number of previous oscillators, ones where I kind of liked, well, I like this feature of this one, and I like that feature of that one, and I sort of mashed them up to get what I wanted. It's a, uh, an oscillator based on the 3340 oscillator chip. If you're not familiar with that, the Curtis CEM3340 chip was introduced somewhere around 1980, I think and was used in a number of well-known synthesizers of the 1980s and beyond. It was out of production for a number of years and then some years ago they brought the CEM3340 back into production. But uh, in the meantime Alpha came out with the AS3340 which was their more or less drop-in replacement for the CEM chip and later on Alpha came out with the AS3340A which is supposed to be an improved version of the AS3340 and that's the 3340A is what I've got in here and um, yeah so let's take a look at the front panel here starting at the bottom we've got our output waveforms here we've got a triangle wave we've got a ramp We've got a pulse wave. Those are the standard waveforms that the 3340 chip will produce. We also have a sine wave output here, which the 3340 doesn't produce, but there is a triangle to sine converter circuit in here, which takes the triangle wave and reshapes it into a sine wave. For the inputs, we've got two 1 volt per octave pitch control voltage inputs here. We've got another exponential pitch control voltage input here, which has an attenuator. Uh, sorry, that one there. And there's also a linear frequency modulation input with an attenuator. There's a pulse width modulation input. That's the attenuator for that one. And in addition, there's this knob here, which is a knob for manually setting what the center value for the pulse width modulation is. Got a sync input. You can plug an, another oscillator into this input and it will synchronize this oscillator to the external one. There is a three position switch here that lets you select uh, hard sync or soft sync or turning sync off. There's a fine-tuning knob for setting the pitch. There's an octave switch, which has 11 positions, which, okay, that's a lot. But I was somewhat influenced by the uh, Befaco Even VCO, which is the second synth module I ever made, a Eurorack synth module, and uh, that one had a 10-position octave switch. I used an 11 position switch here just because if you're going from minus 5 octaves to plus 5 octaves, minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts, that's that's 11 steps. And, uh, and the 3340, if you've got it connected upright, actually does track pretty well across uh, a lot of octaves. So yeah, this goes up all the way in, in, in the position labeled 8, you're up here, uh, the center uh, frequency the way I've got this set up this is up around the top of the piano keyboard and uh, 4 is down around middle C if it's in the 0 position that's down right at the bottom of the keyboard or, or a little below and then there's two more positions below that which gets you right down into low frequency oscillator territory so that's the octave switch 
Over on the side here, there's access for four trimmer potentiometers, so you have front panel access to, tr to uh, trim the, uh, the tracking and the central frequency value and the uh, pulse width modulation range. So that's the front panel. Uh, if we look under the hood, you can see this thing is designed as, as two parallel circuit boards here. This circuit board here has the 3340 chip on it and a couple of op amps and a bunch of other components. There's a, another op amp chip on this uh, top board here. As far as the design goes, there's some attributes, let's put it that way, of the 3340 that need to be dealt with. And in particular, there's one fairly infamous problem with the 3340, which is if you have it connected up as shown in the sample circuit in the data sheet, um, then the frequency that you get out of the oscillator will change if you change the pulse width which is a rather unfortunate thing it means that if you've got your oscillator set up so it's perfectly in tune with a 50 percent pulse width and then you change the pulse width to 10 percent it goes out of tune and this is a problem that exists with all the 3340 chips the curtis chip as well as the alpha and the alpha as3340a they all have this problem this is something that's been discussed widely on uh various online forums. There's been a number of suggestions for ways to try to fix the problem. And I did some tests on the breadboard and decided the way that I thought worked best for dealing with the problem has to do with the negative power supply. So the 3340 is designed so that if you have a plus and minus 15 volt power supply or a plus and minus 12 volt power supply, you can take your minus 15 volts or your minus 12 volts and connect it through a resistor to pin 3 on the chip. And that connects it to an internal Zener diode, which reduces that 12 or 15 negative voltage down to a negative a smaller negative voltage that's suitable for what the chip needs to do. And that will work. The problem with it, though, is that, as I understand it, what's happening is that when you've got that minus 12 or minus 15 volts being reduced down by that Zener diode, the Zener heats up. And so it heats up stuff around it on the chip, and that affects the way the chip works. And if you look at the alpha data sheet they still do show the minus 12 or minus 15 volts connected through a resistor to pin 3 in their typical circuit diagram but in the text they tell you that it's preferable to just connect a regulated negative 5 volt supply directly to pin 3. In that case you're not using the Zener because you've already got a low enough negative voltage. It just uses that negative 5 volts directly. The Zener has nothing to do. It doesn't heat up and it takes care of these problems. And what I found in testing was that this pulse width frequency shift problem goes away if you're using a regulated minus 5 volts supply goes away completely or at least gets so negligibly small that it's not even worth thinking about it. So there's that feature taken care of. That This here is the uh, negative 5 volt regulator and that takes care of that problem. Another problem that you have is if you look at the trailing edges of the pulse wave and especially at low frequency you see some ringing, you see some high frequency stuff going on at the trailing edges of these pulses. So another well-known problem, again, you find that discussions of this online. The standard solution to this is to connect a resistor between pins 4 and 5, and different people have expressed different ideas about what 
value that resistor should be. In the tests that I did, I found that I, I felt that uh, one mega ohm gave the best results and it would eliminate this ringing problem down to the lowest frequencies that I looked at. Another attribute of the 3340 is not so much a problem, it's just it's a design feature, is that the amplitudes of the output waveforms are different. They all start from zero volts, but if you have a 12 volt power supply, the triangle wave goes from zero to four volts, the ramp wave goes from zero to eight volts, and the pulse wave goes from zero to about ten and a half volts. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can, you can just use these as they are. My preference, though, is to have my audio signals be a consistent plus and minus 5 volts. So 10 volts peak to peak centered on 0 volts. And so what I did in this design here was I added output stages on the triangle, the ramp, and the pulse wave outputs to shift them so that they are zero centered and to scale them so that they're all consistently minus five volts to plus five volts. Not just my personal preference, but also in addition, the, um, the triangle to sine circuit requires a zero centered triangle wave, something like plus and minus five volts. So that's what I did. Now, it ought to be said that not everybody cares about uniform zero centered amplitudes and not everybody wants or needs a sine wave output and has to be said that those two things add up to a lot of parts. In fact if you look at the back circuit board here nearly all of the components here, nearly all these resistors, these two triangles, these three trimmers and this chip all have to do with scaling and shifting the outputs and with the triangle to sine conversion. So if you don't care about uniform plus minus 10 volt outputs and if you don't care about sine waves, um, all of this stuff here is unnecessary. You could go with a much simpler design than this. But I did want those features. So the larger part count is there. All right, that's the design of the thing. Let's take a look at how it works. Here's the Hero VCO. See it here on the oscilloscope. There's our triangle wave. And of course, we've got other waveforms. Got the sine wave. I haven't actually spent much time trying to set up the sine wave uh, to uh, get the proper shape, but it's, it's pretty good as it stands right here, I think. And. Here's our ramp wave and our pulse wave. And with the pulse wave, of course, we can adjust the pulse width. We can make it very narrow. We can make it very wide, anywhere in between. We can do that with control voltage and so forth and so on. Let's put this back on the triangle wave. Okay, so and we've got our octave switch here so we can get all kinds of frequency range. Here's our pitch fine tuning and so on. Now I wanted to take a look at the sync so I've got another oscillator here which I'm going to uh, bring up on the oscilloscope. Okay, these are close together in frequency and when they're close together they lock together. So if I make small changes in the other oscillator frequency, the frequency of this follows it. It stays a triangle wave, but the frequency follows the input wave. Now if I switch this to hard sync on the other hand, then what happens when I change frequency? Well, then it changes the shape of the waveform from the hero. So we're getting different waveforms. We can uh, try to get 
try switching this to a, a ramp wave, for instance, and you can see we get this kind of stuff going on. So we get different, more complex waveforms by using hard sync. So there you are, the Hero Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you were paying close attention. If you were paying close attention, you might have noticed something I didn't mention, which is that it kind of looks at first glance like there's two Eurorack power headers on the circuit board here. If you look a little more closely, you realize, yeah, okay, this is a Eurorack style 10-pin power header. This here, though, is not. This is an 8-pin header. What the heck is that about? Uh, well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. It um, has to do with what I think is one of the most interesting features of this module, and I'm going to tell you all about it in the next video. So, stay tuned, subscribe, see you next time on Analog Output.